it's a Saturday and I'm actually just at home here editing the movie when I got a message from a guy named Andy Martinez. Andy used to work at Mandalay Bay as a bellhop. Here's some of the pictures he just sent me. And then Andy got injured at Mandalay Bay, as you can see there. And um, what Andy told me is that after he got injured, and this was a work-related injury, they basically told him uh, Mandalay Bay um, basically forced him to quit. Um, that's how compassionate they were. Um, kind of the same compassion they showed to the 58 people that got uh, killed and the over 800 people that got injured when they sued the victims of the mass shooting. They intentionally get uh, gamblers back and then pretty much screw them over. They have a recovery team that's smoothing things over after uh, a gambler loses. What's a recovery team? It's a smooth talking, educated people that uh, call up gamblers after they've lost a lot of money and they're the ones who uh, try to negotiate to get the gambler back with comps and you know so on and so forth, Cirque du Soleil shows. And uh, sometimes when those uh, gamblers get back to uh, the casino, uh, all those comps have been yanked. They have like they end up having to pay for their room, pay for their parking, and it just pisses them off. I mean, they're making a promise to get that person to walk through the door, and then they're going back on that promise. Um, that sounds, um, frankly, that sounds extremely unethical. The hourly employee is stuck with this irate, pissed off guest and it puts a lot of pressure on, on the hourly employee who's just trying to earn a, a quick buck and also nine times out of 10, the hourly employee is uh, works off of tips and there's no way that employee can earn an honest living off of tips with a pissed off guest. They're swindling them and lying to them and um, and telling these people that there's something there for them that isn't there for them, and that's wrong. And um, and and none of this justifies what Stephen Paddock does, but it it helps explain it a little, maybe. It, it helps explain his anger. He did kick their ass. He used to win plenty. He did very well gambling. He knew what he was doing. That all ended once MGM bought Mandalay Bay. Changes came immediately. We got light bulbs for a Christmas gift, but they taxed us $17 on our check for it, so it wasn't a gift. We bought a light bulb for our Christmas gift. MGM International tightened up a whole bunch of policies and procedures, and they started pinching the high limit gambler a little more and stopped fulfilling comps. They didn't make any money on him. So, what would they do? They would say, Oh, well, we're sorry, Steve, but there's going to be 3x points tonight from midnight to 6, but you don't get the 3x points. And then when they broke the deal, he was pissed. The deal's a deal. They were jerking him around a lot. They were lying to him about his comps. I've seen this countless times with other gamblers, high limit gamblers, would lose 500,000, leave pissed off. So Manly Bay would have this recovery team. Man, they put their chapstick on and start kissing a lot of ass smoothing things over for him, losing the amount of money he lost. And they would promise him all these comps. Free weekend stay at a nice suite. And then you got me, the bell guy goes in to go get his free room. And all of a sudden, hotel tower's fully committed, which means there aren't any rooms available, but they can sell him an upgraded room. This high limit gambler's thinking. The casino host emails me two days ago confirming my comps. I get here and I have nothing and I've already paid $100 for valet. I've given the bell guy 20 guys to escort me in. Now I gotta pay an extra $500 for my room that's supposed to be comped. Working as a bell person for over 13 years, I saw it continuously thinking everything's gonna be comped. And when they get there, nothing is calm. This deceptive practice comes from the very top. MGM and Manly Bay, they definitely want to hide all these tricks they pull on gamblers. They're there to make a winner a loser. We are talking about the largest mass shooting in the history of the United States. 
This is a crazed lunatic. My brother just killed 58 people. My dad was on the 10 most wanted FBI list. We're not normal people. Ah! <laughs> Steve gambled $1.6 million at the Mandalay in the week before he did this. He was really, really angry with the gaming industry. There's been accusations that there's multiple shooters. That has been proven to be false. You had politicians grandstanding on this Vegas Strong movement to get elected. Vegas Strong. I'm turning tragedy into opportunity. It was an election year, and it was camera time for Lombardo and his friends. I want to thank Sheriff Lombardo for your leadership. I'm getting feast time every day. Almost every press conference, you saw one figure, and that was Steve Sislak, using this as a springboard for his political campaign. He used the tragedy to get elected. While the hashtag Vegas Strong campaign raised over $10 million, less than $20,000 were distributed to the victims in the first five months. If they came out and said what really happened, I think they're afraid of a period of time where people say it's not safe to go to Vegas. Nothing happens in Las Vegas without the ring of a cash register. MGM Resorts is suing the victims. They are being sued for getting shot. Shameful, disgusting, outrageous. The newly released video shows Las Vegas police waiting in the hallway as Stephen Paddock continues to murder people. Oh my God. Lives could have been saved if they would have taken action. They were fibbing the whole time about being such big heroes they are hiding in the hallway. I asked them, are you stupid or are you incompetent? Please stop asking your question. You hear officers directly saying, turn your cameras off. Tell you right now there's more than one shooter. Could be as many as three. We saw multiple muzzle flashes coming out that window. There is no conspiracy. Can't trust it! Yeah, can't trust this!